Actually, before we do that, I'm going to talk about implicit conditional statements. So, implicit conditional statements. What these guys are, are just if P of X and Q of X are predicates, so just a sentence where it comes to say when you plug at the end, if they're predicates with a shared domain D, then for all X in D, um, P of X implies Q of X. So it's a universal conditional statement. We can write it a, little, a slightly condensed notation. Just say P of X implies Q of X, just like that. So the point is, if you see this statement right here, first of all, from context, figure out what the domain is, and then you're good. So for context, figure out what, what, what the shared domains we're talking about, and then it is that statement. So um, this is just a shorthand way to write this. That's all it is. But it's incredibly useful, and you've probably seen this in math, and I almost guarantee you that um, probably, I, I'm not calling the people out in the Zoom lecture, so no one has to answer, but probably, I would say 95% of you that are watching that are watching this video have used this double arrow right in, in their math class at some point and they probably didn't use it quite correctly. This happens in calculus all, all the time because people haven't learned what these things actually mean and they'll say something along the lines of like, let's say something along, along, along the lines of like, okay, x squared equals like x equals 2, x squared then equals 2 squared, which 4. Right, that's not the right way to use this arrow, not the right way to use this arrow either. Right, these things actually mean specific things. I want to take off for it because I'm a cool dude, but the point is, um, the point is, yeah, these things actually have specific meanings, and this is the specific meaning. So, I'll give you a quick example of how useful this could be, or like, or like where we'd use it. It's going to come up later. So, we don't even know all the math yet. We're going to do, we're going to do something like we're, we're going to go over the math later. An example could be prove that, or I'll say, we're gonna prove this claim, and the claim's gonna be that uh, if, or for all, I, I'll, I'll write it in math. For all x in the real numbers, right, x squared minus five x plus six equals zero, implies that x equals minus 2 or x equals minus 3, right? And you guys have totally done this before, right? I mean, you, you've had this factoring problem probably a thousand times. And the way you prove it is you go, okay, proof. Assume x is an r with x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Then, and so what you're doing here, right, is you're assuming that the hypothesis is true and then showing that the conclusion must be true because that's how you prove an if-then truth. So then um, we have that x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0 um, by assumption. And then from there, we can say this is x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 6 equals 0 by addition or kind of reversing or subtraction or, or reversing addition. And this is going to be the same thing as x times x minus 2 minus 3 times x minus 2. And what we did here 
is we factored, but factored is really just the opposite of the by distributing. And then we can distribute again to get x minus three times x minus two, blah, blah. It goes on like this. The point is, this is how we use this arrow in practice, right? Because what this double arrow is saying is that they, we, have an, we have an implicit kind of under the hood domain here that we get from context. And that is the real numbers. We're using the real numbers everywhere here as a domain. And we can just use this double arrow to avoid writing all those real numbers and just get it nice and simple and say, this means this means this means this, and it goes on and on like that. I hope that makes some sense. I, well, I, I meant to stop like right here, but then I got so into the proof because it's such a nice proof. I love the zero product property. Um, but anyway, I would love to get the zero pro product property on a bumper sticker. That being that if A times B equals zero, that means A equals zero, B equals zero. One of my favorite properties. Okay. Um, anyway, any questions on what this means? Good, because it's the most simple thing we're going to do all day. So, 